watching it on my other computer. So it is, it is catching up. The Wood Butcher ad's been run. Um, it's just slowly catching up. So we're in good shape. So, yeah, keep doing the show. We'll keep going from here. And if Fred can get in on his – wait a minute. All right, we're back live. Keep going. Yep. Here, and if Frank can get in on his, wait a minute. All right, we're live, Brian. All, All right. right, excellent. So, hey, welcome back. As I said, if anybody's watching the show, we are having some technical difficulties. I just leave it right there for now. I've got my sidekick here, um, but. Uh, we will continue the show. Fred's going to still be cooking. We have it on the all camera. Uh, we've got the grill cam here. Uh, you can see on the grill cam, Brian's working on his uh, his bacon weave. I just put in my pasta. I'm using uh, penne pasta uh, that I have put into red wine. So I got red wine in here infusing into this pasta. It gives it a really cool color and a great sweetness to it. And uh, I'm doing this to make sure it's blue is my red, white, and blue pasta. For the red pasta, I used red lentil pasta today. Um, just as a hint, you can you can actually use uh, beet juice um, to color that. Now, if you use beet juice uh, to color your pasta red, make sure you don't bake it, because when you bake it, um, that redness will go completely away because it changes the acidity level, um, and it completely will come out of the uh, white. Uh, so if you were gonna make this pasta, a cold pasta dish, which I'm doing, you'd be good with the beet juice, um, but, uh, on this one today, I used red lentil pasta, uh, just because it was a little bit easier. So I've got that on there. We're going to be working there. Next thing I'm going to do is check back in on Brian here real quick. Uh, right. but, uh, then I'm going to start making my blueberry soda. So Brian, where are you at? So I am going to make the sour cream sauce for the hot dogs, which is obviously sour cream. Um, some, uh, garlic, couple cloves of garlic, some parsley, salt and pepper and then mix that up really well and that'll go in the bun under the hot dog when we uh, get the hot dog smoked and ready to go so I've got my trusty one of my favorite tools the garlic press and where is my here we go clove of garlic the head of garlic I'm gonna use two big ass cloves in this While, you, while you're doing that, Brian, I'm going to be throwing my, I got a cast iron pan on there. I'm going to be throwing my blueberries in. So I put in about a quarter pint of blueberries. I have them in there. So they're going to sit in there. I'm essentially going to make a syrup out of them. So I got the blueberries in there and I'm going to dump a bunch of sugar on top. And we're going to break this down quite a bit. Soda's very sugary. So we're going to make it really, really sugary. Um, so while that's breaking down, I'm gonna keep an eye on that, and I'm gonna start working on my uh, start working on my potatoes. I'm gonna be using them on a, cutting them up on a mandolin. All right, I'm gonna dice up some parsley here, get it ready to go in. I got a 95 pound German Shepherd up my leg, so I'm gonna fall over here. It'll be another part of the show that. Well, you know what's real fitting, Brian, with the show so far. Hey, this is Independence Day. It's about the world being taken over by aliens. Right. So the, the threat level hot dog. I mean, this is kicking our this, ass here. I, this I, is. We are being threatened big time. <laughs> I'm getting beat up. I don't even know what's going on right now. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't used an ingredient yet. All, all I have is blueberries and wine and pasta. Thank God I pre-cooked some stuff. I'm definitely regretting the fact that I did not prep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not only are you prep, it's going to be the show. <laughs> Since the episode one is the show I need you to talk the most on, and you've got to be focused on what you're doing. All right. So I have blueberries in here with the sugar. I put them all in at the same time because I'm cooking this and heating it up right on the grill. Um, fortunately, for any challenging occasion... Um, I do have wine uh, as well for myself, so I'm enjoying that side of it. A little salt and pepper, a little avocado oil. All right, and that sauce is ready to go. 
All right, let's check the ticket. Bacon's looking good. Uh, what do I need to start stuffing hamburgers? Sorry, right, so I'm going to do uh, two quarter pound patties approximate and then put the stuffing on one and then fold the other one over the top. And this is 50-50 uh, Wagyu Angus blend. Again, for those watching, we do know, I'm watching along with you, we do know that the video is, uh, is challenged. If you do st uh, wait just a few minutes, the video will catch up to it. Uh, also, when we record the show and put it online, it will all be caught up. Uh, but welcome to Threat Level Hot Dog. This is what it's about, Independence Day, the world being taken over. I haven't really prepared a whole lot of everything um, yet. I mean, it's a mess over here. I haven't used anything. I haven't cooked much of anything. Thank God, Brian, you're carrying the show right now. Uh, I'm just drinking wine, smoking cigars, and hoping this comes to an end. I'm just trying to renegotiate my contract right now, so I kind of thought this was the best way to do this. <laughs> So if everybody, if anybody wants to be the new meterator for it, DM us your resume. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> First person that comments is in. Right? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to need a new meterator for uh, for when we go three up on the show or a different solution here. Uh, so it's challenging. But no, I just added the lemon juice here with the sugar. So we got lemon juice in there. The blueberries are breaking down. Uh, it should be uh, a little bit of a syrup here soon. As I said, my chili's already done. That's off to the side. I did that in cast iron. My pasta's already done. Uh, that's fine. The only other thing I've got to do here, really I'm prepping today, is really what I'm doing. I'm, I'm prepping and I'm expediting. So in the restaurant business, I'm pretty much playing expo because almost everything's cooked. I am going to saute up some um, aloha peppers, some green peppers, and some uh, onions off the side here, which is going to go on one of my hot dogs. Um, so I am going to do that here in a little bit, but that'll be after the blueberry soda is done. And then we're going to build that pasta salad here at the end. So most of the stuff I'm doing, Brian, is going to be done at the end. And you're, you're working your butt off carrying the show right now. Where are you, What are you up to? Let's keep at you. All right, so I got one of the hamburgers on. Uh, I got to get the hot dogs ready and uh, get them on the, on the smoker as well. Bacon's looking good. The bacon is actually coming together. First time I've done a bacon weave, so I'm very happy with it. I, I have actually never done a bacon weave. I don't know if that surprises anyone. I haven't. Um, and that's one thing I'm going to credit you towards, Brian, is you've taken on a lot of things on this show that you haven't done before um, and, and have excelled at most of it. So um, the bacon weave, awesome. All right. now, can you guys hear me? Uh, we can now, hear you, Fred. Welcome to the okay. show. Yeah, I'm outside cooking. Yeah, so... Yeah, we can hear you. Welcome. You can talk about what's going on. That's excellent. My priority is shifted to I don't want to screw up my entire meal trying to figure out this uh, technical bit. And he's gone. There we go. All right. Yeah, he's. I would say he's probably at the end of his Bluetooth connection, which is fine. Uh, but the show's going smooth. It's back up. The Internet's caught back up. Brian, what are you smoking this week? Uh, this I, I lit up the La Coalition, which is one of the items we're giving away in the renaming contest. I see uh, Crown Heads, which we'll bring up here shortly. Crown Heads uh, and McGee Smoked Meats. You just had the Las Calaveras, the new Las Calaveras that came out. And we, we talked about it on the show. But what do, what do you <laughs> what are you smoking this week as you're prepping and doing everything? I am smoking uh, Juarez, San Andreas Maduro, Nicaraguan Dominican filler. Spicy chocolate, coffee, a little bit of cedar. It, 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 and by the way, just an update. Los Calaveras has left the My Father factories and is on their way to Nashville. Beautiful. The plan is to start shipping July 6th. So this is a perfect time for us to bring on McGee's Smoked Meats and Crown Heads. Our sponsors are Crown Heads. There we go. Crown Heads. If you were looking carefully and can read small lettering, I did just accidentally show the name of our new show. Uh, but that will be a later date because the website for this is actually already live. Uh, but McGee's Smoked Meats and Crown Heads. Crown Heads and McGee's Smoked Meats bringing you the finest in premium cigars and smoked meat experiences across the southwestern USA. Crown Heads is a premium cigar company committed to producing cigars of artisanal quality that are defined by a combination of excellent flavor, balance, and consistency. 
crownheads.com. Now, checking back in with Fred. That's where we're at right now. Where are we at? You are one. One, you got to experience what I experienced for about five weeks. Two, um, you are now a vital port. The the reaction you had to this and the ability to uh, face adversity head on uh, is what we're looking for on this team. So I'm going to start. I said my blueberries are starting to. I don't know if we've got the grill cam on. Um, <laughs> not gonna. Not that you're going to do anything else, Fred. Uh, but my blueberry mix here is starting to froth a little bit when. Uh, you know it's starting to turn into kind of a syrup when it starts to froth, uh, so that's nice. Uh, I'm going to do a little taste, I'm getting the sweetness, the lemon juice in it's really nice. Uh, so this is getting ready. In about probably five, five minutes or so, I'll pull it off, and I'll make my blueberry soda. Mm. That's actually shockingly coming out a lot better than I thought it was. It's excellent. And my pasta is also wrapping up over here as well. So we've got the patriotic red wine pasta. It's going to be a little al dente. Start about another five minutes or so. All right, then I'm we can start putting some stuff together. I'm in a little holding pattern. I'm waiting for the hamburger to finish. Hot dogs are finished. The fries are going through their second because you fry at 325 for a couple minutes and then you pull them out and you take your oil to 375 and then you dump it in again crispy on the outside soft and fluffy on the inside i'm gonna switch to scotch is it too early to do that can i uh can i start drinking i'm already a bottle of wine in fred when you said panic i, I chugged a bottle of wine we're good to go like everything that could go wrong right now has like now now people can hear me again before they couldn't hear me. Um, I'm sure I had some awesome witty commentary that just got cut out completely. So I'll dub it in later. I'll just dub in some sort of, you know, some sort of stuff. You were hilarious. I, I was crying laughing because it started to go bad when my grill almost blew up. And then you're like, when you said panic, panic, I, I was crying. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of my eyes. <laughs> Yeah, Tammy's validating for me in the chat there. I can see it says, never too early for scotch. You're absolutely right. Uh, do they make a breakfast scotch? Because, um, well, I guess they all could be. Um, so, hey, I'm going to do this while I have a connection. Let me just do the top five real quick while we're here. Uh, yeah, what the, right. the challenge to all of us was the top five uh, patriotic movies. So vote for your favorite. Uh, McGee took Top Gun, Lone Survivor. Air Force One, Team America. Is that the puppet one, Brian? Yes. Oh, my God. I've never watched that. Okay. And uh, Miracle. Uh, I'm going to end with Carney's because it's kind of controversial. So I went with uh, the movie <laughs> The Right Stuff, Lone Survivor, Independence Day, Patriot Games, and Rudy. Which, by the way, if that's not if Rudy does not qualify as an American patriotic movie, I don't know what does. I mean, dreams come true, people. Now let's go to Carney, and I'm going to work kind of out of order here. Uh, the Patriot, I think we can all agree on. Independence Day, uh, both, I had that as well. Uh, you also had Captain America. Oh, Captain America, never mind. Okay, yep, so Captain America, that's fine. And um, the controversial one that I, I think you really need to address is the three games to glory, one, two, two, four, five, and six, for those of you reading Roman numerals. Uh, do you want to explain that? Because I believe that's Patriots related. I'm not sure. One. Just, just for the record, that's New England Patriots, too. They're not America's team because that's a controversy between Green Bay Packers and Dallas Cowboys. So please tell me how that's patriotic. Uh, their colors are red, white, and blue. They are truly America's team. The Cowboys haven't won a Super Bowl in at least 25 decades. Um, and my, so my favorite uh, of them are Three Roses of Glory, uh, Three Games of Glory, episode, uh, Season 1, uh, sorry, Victory 1, Championship 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in that order. Uh, all excellent, excellent films. 
and pieces of American history that we should never forget and that can never be torn down. So go Patriots. Uh, you know, champions keep, keep becoming champions. We've got Cam Newton coming to town. Uh, life could not be better. So, yeah, three games to glory. Uh, you have number two. Because some New England Patriot fans are math challenged. Well, you know, it's Roman numerals, and I'm Irish, so, you know, Roman okay. numbers are tough for me. That's fair. I did just do a test run on these potato chips, by the way. Real good. Mm. Right. Hey, I tester, have... give them back. Okay, right, I can grab another bowl. So I got these chips pretty thinly sliced. Hmm, they're delicious. But here's a potato chip. Hmm, it was surprisingly, it's a great blend. You just got to make sure with the barbecue, when you make the barbecue chips, if you're going to make your own spice rub, uh, you got to make sure that you have uh, brown sugar in there. Brown sugar is one of the key ingredients to a successful barbecue chip. It gives it that sweet mesquite type taste I and mean, then some sort of spice you can use cayenne pepper if you want it hotter or any type of uh, powdered pepper i chose to use chili powder because I, I don't i didn't really personally want it too spicy but i'm dropping these in the oil here very thinly sliced with the cook, and no need to really flip them from side to side and um i have it 365 degrees so it's getting a real nice hot fry to it uh, but you don't want to drop too many in at a time just because they're going to cook relatively uneven. As soon as you pull them out of the grits, you want to have a pan or something like this uh, so you can hit with your seasoning. So that's how it's going to attack, attach to it. After this comes out, I'll start my blueberry soda. My pasta is just about to finish, so we'll start cooking some of the vegetables I have up here. And then we'll start constructing the pasta salad um, as well. All right. How you doing, Brian? I don't think I'm behind. I feel like I'm behind, but I don't think I am. By the way, there's n no way I'm gonna finish. <laughs> you're still gonna I'll, you're still gonna finish me. I've just been lazy, I guess, this entire beginning of the show. I didn't react well to this chaos. All right, let me get these fries over here. While you're doing that, Brian, I'm taking my syrup, my blueberry syrup I have here, out of the cast iron pan. I'm just going to put it into a little uh, bowl here to cool off slightly before I put it on the ice. Mm. Lick the spatula. Delicious. Uh, making a cake. All right, so the fries are done. What do you say? I am going to... John on there. Mile an hour wind out here, and it's blowing everything I got out here set up off the table. This is a very fit, I'm telling you, threat level hot dog. We bit off more than we could chew today. We did. All around. I can't chop anything. I guess, Brian, if we'd like to keep Fred on the show, I guess at the end of this, we have to make him the winner, right? I think so. Right, I wish you could try these potato chips. Mm. So I've got on here, I'm going to put my pan on here. I'm going to put a little oil in. I'm going to get that warmed up. This is where I'm going to put the onions. 
get that warmed up. I'm going to do onions, the uh, Aloha peppers, the green peppers in there. Those are going to go on top of one of my hot dogs. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there with the oil just to break that down so it gets into the oil a little bit. And then what we'll do at the end is I don't like burnt pepper. We'll season those vegetables with a little pepper at the end. Uh, that'll be nice. And then we're going to start putting some stuff together here soon. Hey, is this a cooking show? I just joined. I just got. I just got on here. Is this a, is this some sort of cooking show? Who am I? Why am I here? Why am I here? You're the meter raider. Welcome oh to the show. Gosh. Oh, you're in yeah. char- you're in charge of the show this week. Thank you. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually oh, wrestling with my grill right now and and uh, trying to get temperature right. So we'll see what's going on. I don't know. I'm gonna hopefully. I'm hoping so what you- in tw- 20 minutes I have food to show. Yeah, do you, so where, So tell us where you're at in terms of your cooking. We all know where we're so at in terms of the show. The, the artichoke's um, been on there for the a show. while. Um, it was not, the, the grill was not getting super hot for some reason, and I've never had that problem <laughs> on the pellet grill, and I haven't, so I mean. I, I wonder why. Out. Let's just throw something else in there. So uh, now it seems to be fired, so the artichokes are a little bit behind. The corn's been on there. The Kobe beef brisket patties are on there. Uh, peaches are late in the game, but they're, they don't really take very long. So I'm, I think the burgers are actually going to be done first. Uh, so we'll see. Um, hopefully I can get it all done and at least bring it into the office here and show everybody a picture of it. At worst case, I can post it online, but I think I can actually assemble. Uh, but I've got, so once the burgers are done, the brioche buns will get toasted. Uh, there's an, uh, ancho chili butter. No, I'm sorry. The ancho chili butters for the corn. Uh, then we'll have the, um, sriracha mayo. And so we'll build the burger with the two cheeses, the sriracha mayo, the um, caramelized onions when that all gets together. Uh, corn which is for the ancho chili butters for the corn. Uh, the artichokes is an optional. There's a, a regular butter and an ancho chili butter. And uh, what else is out there? Uh, I guess just peaches. So we'll see. See you later. See ya. I'm uh, I'm just making some more chips here. Just doing potato chips. My family is a big fan of potato chips, and these are very thin. So I know my dad and I are going to crush these. So I got two full russet potatoes. I'm going to do the chips here. Being very careful not to cut myself on the mandolin. Things have gone really bad so far on the show. Almost had a grill explode. Fred's grill is not working correctly. Brian didn't have any chance to prep before the show. So he's going to work the whole show. It's a mess today. Threat level hot dog. You're in the thick of it with us, guys. We appreciate our viewers for sticking around. We do have some great things to announce here at the end of the show. We're going to announce a winner of our name contest. And we're also going to be announcing our name change, our new program schedule. And at the same time, uh, we're going to be announcing a full-fledged social media program. We have Instagram. Our Facebook page will be changing today. Uh, after the show, uh, our website, the new name is uh, is alive currently as we speak. We'll be announcing that. Um, we'll be announcing the fireworks, talking about the fireworks show again. So stick around. Uh, we will be announcing the naming winner, new show schedule, as I said, new reveal of the website, the name. And uh, we also have a newsletter on there, too. Um, and this is one more thing I'll read here. We do have our last sponsor. And then I'll get to my prepping here. Uh, we've got the Red Meat Lovers Club. Red Meat Lovers Club. The Red Meat Lovers Club is based out of sunny South Florida with its eye on establishing chapters around the world of statesmen who have the thirst for old brown spirits and yearning for the glorious beast. And they want to develop strong personal and business bonds with each other. We exist to exalt the act of gathering, dining, and ensure that we are the best business dining club in the country. Every meeting is curated experience that no one else can have besides our statesmen. This club is a lifestyle that only, uh, that can only be shared with similarly vision members. We have the desire to beef, drink, smoke, and laugh. These are the core of the existence. M- RMLCclub.com. RMLclub.com. Red Meat Lovers Club. Thank you. New stuff coming with them uh, here shortly. Uh, they're part of our prize package for our winner as well. Uh, we got the Stakesman Spatula. Five LFD cigars, five La Coalition uh, cigars by Crown Heads and Drew Estate. $100 gift card from Meat and Bone, one of my new favorite meat purveyors around the country. Uh, we updated from uh, Pat Street to them. They've got a great collection of stuff. 
Um, we've also got a signed copy of Fred's book coming to you as well. Um, and also a Wood Butcher uh, Red Oak Cigar Coaster and Ashtray, along with Grillgate uh, Great Cleaner. And, um, yeah, that's what we got for the prize package. So that'll be given away today. I'm going to transition over here into the blueberry soda. Very, very simple. We're going to put ice. We're going to fill up this glass with ice. So I've got a wine glass here because it looks pretty. Fill it completely full of ice. No specific measurements. We're just going to pour in some blueberry syrup and some blueberries. Oh, beautiful. Making a mess. It's great. And then we're going to top it off with some San Pellegrino sparkling water. And we'll give it a little stir here. Here we go. And there we have our main blueberry soda. It's very good. All right, can you see the tray? Yes, sir. All right, we're almost done. I'm waiting on the bacon weed. The bacon weed is almost crispy enough to lay on top of there. The hamburger, you can see how big it is. I might have overdone it, but I doubt it. Uh, hamburger's done. Stuffing is, again, cream cheese, Monterey Jack, and uh, jalapeno. Hot dogs are done. Fries are done. I am waiting on, on the weed. So I'm going to have to cut down, I think. Out of all the items I have to do today, I never thought the potato chips would actually be, be take the longest. It's easily the most labor-intensive item that I've cooked here in a while. How long did you leave them in the fryer? Uh, they stay in for maybe a minute at the most because they're very thin. Uh, but you... You can only put so many in at a time, and people can eat chips faster than I can cook them. Um, so that's one of the issues I'm running into as well, is that the, uh, the speed at which I cook them is not, a, not fast enough to eat them. Yeah, I ran into uh, the artichoke since my pellet grill kind of stalled out a little bit there. I'm not, I'm not sure why in the very beginning. So the artichokes, um, I think artichokes are really a dessert item now that I think about it. I think that's probably a better dessert item than it is to go with the entree. So... I'm going to assemble everything and at least bring it over here. The burgers are coming off, caramelized onions are done, steak cut bacon's done, uh, corn should be getting pretty close. So I'm just gonna pull those off and then I'll bring them in here and show everybody. Beautiful. So I've got my Aloha peppers and green peppers sauteing here. We're not gonna be caramelizing them. I like them to be a little bit of texture. I'll have a little bit of texture to them. I put them on the hot dog. We're getting ready to prep some of these hot dogs together as well. All right, let's pull this weave off and see what it looks like. I just want to bring everybody's attention to something really cool real quick. This is the color of the pasta that came out of the, I don't know if everyone can see it, but this is the color of the pasta with the red wine infused. It's super rich in color. It's got great sweetness to it, uh, but beautiful. The pasta's done. El dente. I'm mixing that in here, and then we're going to start putting together the pasta salad.
more chips here. A little bit more of the barbecue rub. And one thing I'm going to do to top off these barbecue chips is we're going to deep fry some bacon. So we're going to put some bacon on top of these babies. I got some deep fried bacon going in here. I'm just going to pop it right in the fryer. We're going to fry the snot of this sucker. All right. So I've pulled off the Kobe beef briskets and assembled the sandwiches. So I don't know if you can see those, but uh, they are Kobe beef brisket mix. Uh, two cheeses, white cheddar, and extra sharp yellow cheddar. Uh, steak cut bacon. They're about a three to four ounces per piece of bacon. Uh, caramelized onions on top. The top of the brioche bun has a uh, spicy mayo, sriracha mayo. So those are the burgers. And I think you can see those right there. Uh, right there. Can you guys see those? Oh, you guys can't see anything. I think they can see it on the show. But uh, corn's getting ready to come off, although everybody's seen corn, but I will probably grab that and at least show you what it looks like. And then also the, uh, maybe I can get the peaches knocked out. We'll see. All right, so I'm putting together right now, I'm putting together my pasta salad. Oh, boy. Everything's going off now. I'm putting light mayo in here. A little bit of raised mustard. I'm making this kind of like a potato salad. I'm throwing in some sun-dried tomatoes. I'm throwing in some shallots. And I'm throwing in some diced up celery. I'm going to put a little salt. A lot of salt. And pepper. And the last thing we're going to put on is some lemon juice. And then I'm going to start cooking these hot dogs here. I got some hot dogs to put on. We're going to be a little over time today, so stay put. I completely destroyed my plating. It tastes, it tastes amazing, <laughs> but it, it's the ugliest sin. Oh, my God. If this doesn't make people want to continue to watch our show and we rename it, nothing will, right? Well, we brought our D game for sure today. But let me show you this. Again, it's ugly as sin, but you can see the stuff inside of the stuffed hamburger. Horrible taste great. Mixing up the red, white, and blue pasta salad right now. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in there, too. Got a big, large amount of pasta salad here. We're in great shape. I'm going to give it a little bit of a taste here once I get it mixed up. See if I want to add a little more lemon juice to give it a little bit more tang and acid. Perfect, just the way it is. What I was going for with the pasta salad, I've made potato salad on here a few times. I was going for that potato salad taste um, and kind of the, the substitute for potato salad. Uh, so we got a red, white, and blue pasta salad completed off of the side. That's going really good. I'm going to clear up here. The potato chips are done. The potato chips are done. I got that plenty burgers. more. That burger's really good. The burger's really good. Right. Not going to lie. Now, mine looks horrible, but it tastes great. Okay, so I've got to, I'm going to do this real quick while i got like a two-minute break before i got to run and check the peaches. Uh, this is a special Would You Rather for this week. Now, here's the deal. You have to determine whether this food item was from the United States or not. 
So the very first item, and I already know the answer, so I can't, I, I don't get to play. But basically, uh, hamburger or corn dogs? Brian, which ones? Which ones from America? Which ones not? Corn dogs. Corn dogs is what? Corn dog. America. Uh, I'm going corn, corn dog from America, hamburger not. That's correct. Hamburgers, hamburger, Hamburg, Germany. Okay, French fries or buffalo wings? Which one's from America? Buffalo wings. Buffalo wings. That is correct. That is America. Apple pie or pecan pie? Trick question. Ooh. Which one's from America? Pecan, pecan pie. pie. Yeah, pecan. That is correct. Mac cheese or tater tots? Ooh. Tater tots. I'm going to go mac and cheese. It's tater tots. And last what? one, meatloaf. Oh. Meatloaf or brownies? Which one's American? Oh, wow. Meatloaf. Brian, you first. Meatloaf. <sighs> brownies. It is brownies. There you go. Good job, guys. You actually did pretty good on that. That's a good one. Bro. That was that was a tough one, Fred. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. It was fun researching where they were all from, too. <laughs> yeah, and then all the fun ended as soon as the show started. So I've got my hot dogs on the grill. i got my Fenway Franks going. I've got my uh, sautéed Aloha peppers, green peppers, and onion with some salt and pepper going here with the olive oil. Really nice. I'm going to start constructing these hot dogs shortly. I've got my, uh, my New England-style rolls here just to picture what they are. They're flat rolls on both sides. Uh, so I have those up on top just getting some heat. And then we're going to start constructing these hot dogs I actually, shockingly, have three plates on. I've got potato chips on, uh, blueberry soda, and my potato sa uh, my uh, pasta salad, and my chili's off to the side here. And uh, so the chili's ready to roll as soon as I'm ready to start plating. Uh, I also deep fried bacon. So we've got deep fried bacon. That's something that hasn't happened on the show yet. Brian's got the bacon weave. He smoked it, and I've got the deep fried version of that. That bacon's going to go on top of the potato chips. That sounds awesome. Are you doing it in a deep fryer or like in a kettle? Uh, deep fryer. I've got my deep fryer out front today. Okay. By the way, I'm going to take a picture after we're done in my area. Uh, I'm sure it's not as much chaos as Fred actually had going on around him. <laughs> Your hair is a little unkempt. However, my picture I'm going to post is going to be the example of what probably was going on at Fred's, but he handled it a lot better. My place is a disaster today. It's an absolute mess out here, Brian. Mine is a train wreck for sure. No, mine is too. Mine is too. <laughs> a bunch of people are pissed off that hamburger is not U.S. Um, it is a disputed category. The default, the reason it goes to Ham Germany is because they had Hamburg cows and they are already doing ground beef and they are already putting them in patties to serve in pubs. So they kind of already had hamburgers. So, uh, but you know what? That's why it's a disputed item and everybody can believe what they want to believe. The um, the mac and, mac and cheese wasn't from the United States, correct? No, it was not. But, you know, anything pasta related really isn't, you know, somebody throws cheese on it. Um, you know, I'm sure basically we take everything and we make it more and more and more. So uh, it really it really depends. All right, so just to remind here, I've got uh, Rice's Hot Dogs on the grill. I've got Fenway, authentic Fenway Franks on the grill. So I'm going to be doing six hot dogs here total, but we're going to be doing two of each. So there'll be six hot dogs on my plating. Those red hot dogs, are they hot links or are they actual hot dogs or just red? They're, they're, all, they're all beef. They're technically all beef hot dogs. And what it is, Brian... It's it's really awful. It, it's they're just dyed. The the casing oh. is dyed bright red, but it's it's been ha it's been Rice's is probably the most famous version up here. Uh, but there's also a company called Jordan's Hot Dogs, uh, Jordan Foods. I um, mean, it's just what it's what if you order a hot dog in Maine, you get a red hot dog. Um, it's like if you were to get a regular hot dog, like an all beef hot dog, like I'm doing with the Fenway Franks. Like, that would be shocking. It would be a surprise to get that up in Maine because that's just growing up. All I knew was red hot dogs. Uh, but, yeah, it's 
It's just dyed. It's a red dye. It just makes it bright red. All right. So taking this stuff off here, I got my sauerkraut off to the side. My plating's ready to roll. Move some things around here. I don't, I don't know for you guys, one of the most rewarding scents, and I'm not a huge green pepper fan or pepper fan in general. Um, I like them. Uh, it's just not like if somebody said your favorite vegetables or what, whatnot, it wouldn't be at the top of my list. Um, the smell of sautéed peppers and onions is oh, just man. super rewarding. That's hard to beat. Well, I Brian, try I'm <laughs> oh, go ahead. I try, I try to take my time, but I still finished way before you did. In your in your defense, you were carrying the show in terms of cooking um, live uh, while uh, while Fred was gone, uh, because I was watching you cook most of the time uh, <laughs> while I was going on. So I didn't I didn't really start any of my dishes until about five thirty. Um, so you you were kind of, you were carrying the show there, Brian. Yeah, this is really all just, you know, we did this for Brian. It was a big elaborate prank to get Brian to talk more. So uh, this is it. well done. I'm glad it pulled off. Uh, I just ate the corn with the ancho chili butter. It's outstanding. Artichokes, you know, the way to tell they're done is to pull off a leaf and the leaves come off and they're still on there. They're still going. Peaches are almost done. I'll have all of those uh, plated up here in a second so you can see those. We're going to go a couple minutes uh, over just because of the, the, the incredible fun we're having. That's why. Would you rather? So pretty much for me, when hot dogs are done, this is my opinion. This is how I enjoy hot dogs. When they start to crack a little bit uh, from the heat, that's when I know they're done. That means they're expanding. Um, I, I like a little bit of crack in them. One thing, one thing I don't do, uh, one thing I don't do is I don't slice them beforehand when I'm cooking them here on the grill. Uh, you can slice them and put little scores, you know, score the hot dogs. I don't do that when I'm cooking at home. Look at this. So I score my so the completely opposite. Yeah, I score mine before I put them on the grill. So two and we, ways to do it. Yeah, and in, in the restaurant when we have the snack shack, we score the hot dogs, and it's just. Oh, okay. I, I think I started not scoring them because we always did them at the snack shack. So for me, I was like, uh, I want to not score the hot dog, uh, but it does stop that cracking and that popping. I just enjoy that cracking and popping for me for one reason. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, the only way thing I can attest it to is that's how we used to do it with the snack shack. So I do it the opposite now. Right. Okay. All so, right, so I got my hot dogs uh, on I've, there. I got my rolls sitting there. Oh, go I've ahead, got Fred. The, I've got the peaches done. Um, artichoke is still going. Peaches are done. So I'll show you what those look like. So I originally was going to do a test, and it was going to be um, two. Uh, two of one of them was organic. And the other ones were not. And uh, honestly, before all hell broke loose, I'm not exactly sure which the organic ones. I think it's these two because they were slightly smaller. But um, it's basically just a brown sugar uh, butter recipe that goes in the middle of them and grills them up. So I have no idea. I've never done them before. Uh, I've done something similar. So I'm going to go try them and I'll report back. Perfect. Another thing I did here, Brian, today is with my toasting of the rolls, I did a, I'm using, obviously I'm using a smaller grill, um, but I did a passive uh, toast on the rolls. I put the rolls on the top, uh, they got a good heat to them and there's not a lot of char on it. Um, right. That What that's going to do for me this time, it's just, again, I had a lot of space and I wanted to, it didn't have a lot of space because I was cooking a lot of items. Uh, so it's kind of almost a, a steam. So there's not char on the side. There's not grill marks. Uh, but you have that texture on the roll with it. You still got some texture to it. Uh, but that's how I handled those today. So I'm going to start putting these dogs together. The first dog I'm going to put together um, is the Fenway Frank dog. That's going to have the chili. Uh, the chili, I'm going to put that on top. I'm going to put the two dogs in first. Then I'm going to put uh, chili, and then I'm going to put mustard on uh, mustard on top of those. And I'll show you guys all these at the end, but that's what I'm putting together now. Try this chili.
thought mixing cream cheese with Monterey Jack and stuff in it, that cream cheese would overpower everything. Yeah, you did a good job balancing the flavors. The way you put it together, um, you know, caused that, in my opinion. And, uh, since I was, since I did spend thirty minutes watching you, say I intended on spending uh, the last thirty minutes, not the first. All right, so we're gonna start plating up here. Got those two Fenway dogs. They're gonna get a little mustard. So one thing we were talking about prior to the show, when the show started, I couldn't find a mustard or ketchup dispenser anywhere in my town, so I don't get to put the cool designs on top, so these are going to be a little bit more rustic. Um, but yeah, nowhere in Lincoln, Maine did they have that. And then also I burned myself on my grill uh, prior to the show starting as well. Um, we should have known before the show started there were going to be issues, being that it's our last quarantine grilling show before the name change. Um, but there was a lot of bad things that happened today. <clears throat> I will forever just, I will just be cooking any meals when I'm cooking, apparently on a George Foreman grill in my office right here. So, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll adapt to that. Um, I don't know. Uh, the only thing on mine, uh, the artichokes, um, you know, I don't know if it's cause the. Heat ended up off. I've done artichokes on the grill before. For some reason, this one's just not. They're they're taking a really long time, um, and you know, I, so I think they're going to be a little too try, dry for my liking. But we'll see because a lot of times, you know, you can burn the, you can really get not burn, but you can get the outside of the leaves. Not a problem. It's really on the inside of the artichoke. So we'll see. They were sliced in half, um, same way I would normally do it. But like I said, I did have some sort of heating problem with the pellet grill early on. So. That's the way it is. You know, they all can't be complete home runs. We'll see, though. Uh, jury's out until I actually taste them, but they're taking way longer than I thought they would. Get it back start, did you get it started back up? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's a pellet grill, and it feeds, and I think I think it just kind of got stuck or something, so I went and kind of got something to kind of mess it. I've never had that happen, but it is, it is probably – it's time to clean it. It is time to clean it. It's been getting a ton of use lately, so that could be it. Mine's done that word. They didn't feed uh, They didn't feed all the way down. And yeah. then I thought it was at 275. Next thing I know, I'm at 89. Well, that's and what was weird for me is because it, it was holding right around 250, and I kept trying to get it when I put the Kobe beef patty. What I like about this model is that I can actually open up the center of it and cook directly on the flame at right. the same time. And so right. I, bumped, I bumped it up, and it wasn't moving the temperature, but it was still staying at 350. And I could see in there that it was burning, just not as many pellets as it normally does. So I kept waiting for it to drop all the way down and like burn out that the uh, uh, whatever that area is called I can't remember now, um, but it but it didn't so it was just kind of limping along so I, I'm guessing it was just sort of jammed up somehow I don't I don't know how but um, I'll I'll have to take it apart and clean it tomorrow. And by the way, this is this is my new favorite burger, no doubt. This cheeseburger is absolutely probably perfect. Nice. Tracy's in the other room. She's like, it is. She's also taking out uh, vanilla bean ice cream and mixing it with the peaches now. So does that work? So Brian, you know one yeah. thing. You know one thing we didn't think that could possibly happen here. He has this, as soon as the show starts, everything goes crazy, and he's having the best burger he's ever eaten. He's having the best peaches and cream. We, have we talked about the idea that this maybe this food didn't get cooked here and it was delivered via Uber Eats <laughs> of some kind? I mean, <laughs> it took about the same amount of time. Yeah, well, hey, I, hey, I, I admit it. I don't think the artichokes are going to make it. I don't, I don't think they're, they're going to be right. And the corn took a little bit longer because of the grill thing. But even with the grill failing, I'm not sure what happened with the artichokes. Um, they're, they're definitely a tighter one more, but they were pre-soaked water, which is usually a good way to get some moisture in there. So I'm going to pull them and find out. So we'll see. So right now I'm finishing up the dogs. I got the Fenway dogs done. I bring it over the main dogs were easy. That was just the rice's hot dog with the raised mustard, uh, mustard on the bottom for that hot dog. Uh, and then I'm putting together the loaded carny dog. Now I got the sauerkraut in there, the grilled onions and peppers. I'm going to put yellow mustard on the bottom and then we're going to do some ketchup and some dill pickles. So mustard's going on. I'm going to put the hot dog in there. Threat level hot dog beat us up. We'll 
All right, so a little ketchup here, right on the top. When I do hot dogs, I love tons of toppings. I like it to be over the top. Uh, so we got lots of toppings on all of these. Here we go. I got the homemade dill pickles going on top of the loaded dog. And just because this is a gourmet type item, to make it really special, we'll put a little bit of some dried chives on top for garnish. And I'm going to put some pickles on the side here too. Put a pile of pickles on there on this platter. And as soon as I'm done here, we got a picture, and then we we got to get down to business, guys. We got some we got some yeah, big, we gotta, big we gotta, stuff we to talk. Wrap it up, do the big news. Um, I just pulled the artichokes. They are not even close. They are. Wow. They, so I'm going to have to revisit uh, how I did them. I don't know that I've done I've done them on regular grill. I don't know if I've done them on pellet. Um, the oatmeal and the uh, vanilla ice cream with the peaches, outstanding. Um, but the burger was the big home run. So thank God at least I had a good burger to eat tonight because the rest of it was, uh, you know, corn. The corn's fine, but you can't, you can't mess up corn. I love grilled corn. I love it when it kind of scorches it just a little bit. Uh, it's got some good flavor. The ancho chili butter was good, uh, good with it. I had hoped to use the ancho chili butter with the uh, artichokes. But like I said, I just cut open an artichoke, and it's it's not even remotely closed. It dried out. So I think the pellet grill uh, definitely had an influence on that. But, uh, you know, there's plenty of other stuff to, to fall back on here. Do you want to talk about the name change? So here we are. I got my my plates done here, too. So we've got that. Do we have the grill cam up, Fred? You, it's, it's been full-time grill cam. I've got it. It's all you because I've been in and out. and Nobody wants to change cameras. All right. So here we go. I'm going to take this deep-fried bacon. We're going to put it over the top here of the chips and the pasta salad. Why not? All right, here we go. We've got Threat Level Hot Dog Independence Day special here. We've got your main dogs here. This is uh, the Red Rice's Hot Dog with raised mustard for Maine here and on the top. We've got your Fenway Frank Dog with bison chili. Bison chili topped with uh, raised mustard on top there. Uh, and then we have the Loaded Carney Dog, which has sauerkraut, aloha peppers, green peppers, and onions all sautéed together. And it has mustard in there as well, ketchup, and it's topped with four homemade dill pickles. We've got homemade dill pickles, dill pickles here. We've got bacon topped barbecue, homemade barbecue potato chips. And we've got your red, white, and blue pasta salad. So here's the ultimate uh, threat level hot dog Independence Day platter. Um, for all the crap that went on in this show, I'm, I'm very impressed with this, uh, with this performance. <laughs> I'm going to get a nice picture here. Um, I didn't think this was going to happen. But yeah, moving on. So we do have some exciting stuff too to wrap the show up. Thank you for everyone that stuck around. Um, the uh, the YouTube version of this should be epic. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Every time our program fails, uh, it does record uh, at the same time or if we have a Wi-Fi issue. And if you watch the show, you notice that it catches up as well. Uh, so YouTube will be on there. Uh, but yes, so the big thing that everybody's been waiting for and participating in the last several weeks is our renaming contest. Uh, before we announce the winner, we want to thank everybody that participated in that. Uh, there was a lot of joking and a lot of fun with it. Uh, some serious, mostly joking, but anyone who participated, thank you very much. Uh, but we do have a winner. Um, and it has been done through our randomizer, a uh, randomizer program that we use for all of our Facebook comments. And the winner of our renaming contest, we're not using your name. I apologize. I'm sorry. Uh, but the winner of our contest is Stephen Dex. Uh, which is one of our original uh, original viewers from episode one or two. Uh, so congratulations, Steve. Uh, I, all we need from you is we'll be, re uh, we'll be reaching out to you, but all we're going to need from you is your address, uh, and we'll have your prize sent off to you uh, within the next 10 days. But uh, congratulations and said thank you to everybody that participated in that. Uh, now, moving on uh, Marty, to the next thing. let me fill this in real quick since Steve, and he always brings up the towel. I should send him a customized McGee towel. Because he's the one that brought it up for the first time, so that's right. I think so this I'll give him an in show, in show used towel. This is it. That's what I said. Ew. Yeah, I think you should give Ew. him like a game game worn towel. So the prize has just <laughs> got better. Unwashed. 
But uh, that's congratulations. That's a different box than the cigars. <laughs> Yeah, so most likely uh, Fred's book will be showing up, Steve, prior to any of the other prizes. Uh, I'm responsible for sending the remainder of the prizes. Uh, Fred's book could actually be shipped from and via Amazon. So uh, expect Fred's book earlier. Uh, well, no, no, everything I'm going to send it from here because I'm going I'm to sign it. Oh, yes, Fred's going to be signing it. But, yeah, congratulations. That was a fun contest. It was fun to have everybody involved. Um, it is a little sad because this is our last show is Quarantine Grilling. Um, and we're also going to be having a new schedule. So uh, all of these things will be going on in social media. Um, so our new show schedule will be the first, uh, sorry, the second and fourth Monday of every month. We'll be doing some specials and announcing things. And I'll talk to you in just a few moments of ways that you can keep up on that. Uh, but uh, is it the show ending before seven o'clock? Our Facebook page uh, will be updated with the new branding. Uh, our website, which we'll announce here shortly, is already live. Our Instagram page is already live. Uh, some people did see the Instagram page, and I appreciate for those few people that did see it, uh, not saying anything about it. Uh, but all of our social media and everything will be connected and are connected through our website. Our episodes will be available on YouTube. Um, and that YouTube page before 7 o'clock tonight will be updated with the new branding. Uh, but new schedule, as I said, is uh, second and fourth Monday of every month. Uh, so we'll be doing that. And then I guess the only thing left to say is what we came up with. And uh, for those uh, for those that have followed us as Quarantine Grilling, we appreciate it. We hope you continue to follow us into our future. Uh, there's a lot of new exciting things we have planned, things we've been talking about as a team over the last several months. Uh, so we're really happy and really excited to announce to you that Quarantine Grilling is now retired and we will be called Hacking Gourmet. Nice. There we go. Hey. Ta-da. Ta-da. If there's no better example... I need uh, how much hacks we are so 14 That's is today right. so hacking That's gourmet right. you can visit us right now uh, at hackinggourmet.com uh, the hacking gourmet instagram will be available uh this evening as well that'll be before seven o'clock uh, that is at hacking gourmet on instagram um and the facebook page will be changing to hacking gourmet this evening with new branding um and our first show i believe will be on uh july 13th uh but yes hacking gourmet is what we are uh, hacking gourmet is what we will be and uh and you know the transition was natural so we we definitely definitely hacked <laughs> hacked our way through gourmet today absolutely <laughs> this is the perfect uh, transitional episode but uh, yes. yeah we've got a lot of really i mean we've got a lot of really cool thing planned i mean you know as opposed to and we appreciate everybody hanging out with us i mean we don't want the show to be just basically just kind of watch us cook because if you know neither of us well all of us have big enough egos that we don't really need that so, uh, quite frankly, um, you know, we're going to update some stuff and, and try to come up with a different, you know, a little bit different format, but same people, same faces, uh, same idea, but a little bit more, we got some cool stuff in the work. So we'll look forward to it. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and there's a lot of things we're going to do, uh, going forward to, uh, bear with us, uh, as we transition initially, it'll be, uh, be some similar things with different branding. Obviously the new, uh, the new, uh, the new, uh, website has got a lot of information on it. Uh, but we, we are going to become interactive. We're going to get you involved in what we're doing. We want we want to cook with you. Uh, so there's potential opportunities for that going forward. Uh, so I said, bear with us. The, the future's bright, and it should be really enjoyable. I um, mean, we appreciate everybody sticking with us through this quarantine and uh, being part of this. It was something uh, you know that Brian and I started and Fred jumped on with uh, very quickly uh, right at the beginning. So all of us, this was something that was started to be fun and um, enjoyable. Hopefully we succeeded at that. Uh, but now it's been something that seems like uh, seems like can go on, and it's been important to the people that have been viewing with us. So we appreciate it, um, and thank you the support. But uh, yeah, hacking gourmet. I guess that's us now, huh? That's it. That's it. And we only went twenty minutes. That would be so, uh, hey. today's episode. That'd be a compliment. That's right. <laughs> Actually, this this entire episode was a blooper reel for hacking gourmet. So yeah. we just got it all over with in one shot, just right out of the <laughs> gate. So uh, we're we're good to go. All right. It was brutal, guys. Done. Today was I. I thought in the can was bad. This was this was this was uh, awful. Can. Yeah. <laughs> brutal. Brutal. All right. That's it. We'll see everybody later. Signing off. Hey, wait. Who won? I don't know. Brian, I think. Oh. I think, I think Brian wins for like having to carry the show. I mean, really. Uh, Fred, Brian, and I decided when you were transitioning through everything there. Uh, we decided that there was no way we couldn't make you the winner, uh, <laughs> because as stressed Woo! as we were, my, you, you had, yeah, you, yeah, you got your first win. So well, Fred, right. Fred, you're the winner. So, Fred-
Fred, you got to show us the tip on Uber Eats. If it's a 20% tip for the delivery that you just got, then you're winner this week. All right. Well, then that means I, I go into the uh, Hacking Gourmet as the standing winner at the point. So trust me, I will be using that in episode one. All right. Bye, everybody. All right, guys.